And so next up, we have Lonnie Bookbinder from Ares Precision Medicine. Thank you very much. While my slides are coming up, I'd like to just thank the uh, Uli and all the people that he's uh, organized here in this meeting, and also Pursum, would you mind standing up? Uh, my name's uh, Lonnie Bookbinder, uh, Arise Precision Medicine. Pursun is one of my sponsors of the program and one of my sponsors here, and uh, runs the American Association for Precision Medicine, and we have a collaboration going in an innovation center. We invite any uh, entrepreneurs to come visit us and talk about some of the technology we have available. Can you pull my slides up for me, please? Do I need to do it? Maybe it's this way. Par pardon me? Wait. So ARISE is probably a name you don't recognize with precision medicine. ARISE is an acronym for problem solving. Cancer is a pretty big problem. The way ARISE works is uh, we take a large problem and break it down into smaller and smaller units. And as you'll see, the unit we're breaking it down to is the driver of the cancer. So what we're trying to do is a moonshot. We think that the cure for cancer is going to be somewhere close to where it starts. And so our goal, and I think there's a, is uh, one of these a pointer? Uh, top, very top? Or side? Top one right there? Okay. Oops. So Arise is built around the idea that we're targeting the cause of the cancer, the root cause of the cancer, as is indicated here, and we're attempting to modulate genes that are driving multiple other genes in a, a normal pathway that have been deregulated. They're, they're master regulators, and later in the slideshow I might be able to give you uh, some of the very specific other types of genes they control in the pathways of proliferation, migration, and survival. Um, just a moment about the business strategy. Uh, this next week, uh, starting tomorrow morning, we'll be talking to pharmaceutical companies. They're interested in some of our drugs already. Uh, my focus today will be on lung cancer, which seems to be uh, the most interesting to the pharma industry, and certainly as a lead candidate has a very large market opportunity associated with it. Can you all hear me okay? Yep. So here's a quick uh, synopsis of uh, our, our business and where we stand. Um, we're a, a preclinical stage company. Uh, we're scaling up. We recently raised funds, as it shows at the very uh, bottom of the, of the slide, uh, in a seed round. Uh, we're using RNA interference. We're blocking messenger RNA from making an oncoprotein. And the oncoprotein is what's driving the cancer, and they're normally addicted to that. And in the early process, uh, we want to be able to find biomarkers. We have some defined already. I'll tell you about one lung cancer. Um, the biomarker signals the uh, cancer event has started, and hopefully we can cure the cancer by having an early start against the, uh, the cancer itself before it becomes so crazy and, and bizarre and hy hypermutated. Um, just finally on this particular slide is we filed a PCT patent to, co to cover this particular uh, um, uh, application. Just a little bit about our lead candidate. Uh, you might notice PRDN2 siRNA is being used to overcome an uh, oncoprotein called RIS2. Um, this is a drug that we can use for lung cancer, but also is involved in 50% of other cancers. Um, it's a, a cell cycle regulator and controls many of the pathways related to cancer development. So what happens is, um, somebody smokes a cigarette, a carcinogen then knocks down a very important slide, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it's a very important protein and gene. And as a result of that, a second oncoprotein is activated. So it's a hypermethylation of the good protein um, uh, promoter side on the gene, and it's a hypomethylation which releases the secondary protein to be activated, which controls uh, proliferation, migration, survival, but has no break on it, no tumor suppressor function. And we are recognize that in uh, about 70% uh, of, uh, this is not getting there, 70% of non-small cell lung cancer, the hypermethylation phenomena occurs, and it, we can actually measure that in the sputum in a matter of three to four days after the first exposure to a cigarette. So we measure that, um, and as, as far as uh, what we can do from that point in time, there's going to be possibility of actually following that patient and the methylation status to see when we can actually detect the cancer and maybe treat it very early. So here's a little bit about our in vitro work and a little bit about some in vivo work. 
Uh, on the far left of the slides, um, you'll see that we did this study in lung cancer, A549 uh, cancer cells. And you see the blue um, is the, uh, 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 the cancer cell themselves, the red is the normal. And you see the next part of this, I don't know if I can get this to work or not, I may, may be tired. Um, but I'll point to the uh, second part of the slide there where the blue is down by 90%. That, that's one single dose, a 20 nanometer dose, a 20 uh, nanomol nanomolar dose, uh, killed 90% of the cancer cells and had a, a very little effect on the normal cells. And we compared this to cisplatin, which is one of the drugs used in lung cancer. And you can see the cisplatin has a therapeutic index of about one to one. Whereas in our case, it's about uh, eight, eight to one. So we think that will help carry the day in terms of reducing side effects as well as the high efficacy. And of course, the FDA will want us to compare our drug to other drugs and clinical trials. So we thought we'd pick cisplatin as a comparator. And as you can see in that kind of <clears throat> third uh, bar over, set of bars over, it didn't add much in the way of efficacy, but it add a lot in terms of, of uh, additional side effects. So this wouldn't be. Sorry, was that a oh, one minute? Yeah. Didn't add a lot in the way of side effects. We, we measured the, um, also measured the messenger RNA of both the good protein and the bad protein. The messenger RNA of the bad protein went down, the good protein went up. We had two mechanisms of action. On the right is another one of our studies that we show uh, how we have some in vivo data already in colon cancer, and you can notice a flat line or near flat line down there below. This is our drug delivery system. Um, it it uh, allows us to put the right drug to the right place at the right time at the right dose. And you, as you can see on the right side, we're taking an intranasal approach, which gives us about a hundredfold increase in the activity uh, in the lungs. <clears throat> this is our plan for uh, the development. Uh, we think it's going to be in the next uh, 12 to 18 months that we actually get a pharmaceutical partner and we hope that they will come in somewhere at the IND ready stage. Is my team all uh, picked out to be people who have a strong corporate experience? Um, I'll just mention two of them. Uh, Dr. Vaish has over 100 patents. He developed a part of the patent that Cerna sold to Merck for a billion dollars, so he knows a lot about siRNA. Our drug delivery system comes from Keystone Nano, and uh, we, one of my board members started that company. It's a 28 nanomolar, a nanometer uh, uh, delivery system. Uh, it can be decorated in a variety of ways. We have a $2 million agreement with Sphere of Pharma, uh, a million in equity and a million in cash to help us develop a whole variety of drugs, including the, the lung cancer first. Finally, just a little bit about the competition. Um, we have a novel mechanism of action. Uh, RNAi won the Nobel Prize in 2006. We, th we think it's gonna be a really a valuable product. It's now been approved by the FDA for several companies high therapeutic index, but the biggest advantage we probably have is that the oncoprotein is only expressed in cancer cells. So should we go off target for one reason or another, it's looking for something that's not present and the RNA will eventually just be dissolved. Um, this is a big, big platform. We have probably 25 to 30 cancer targets. We have targets in other areas, so any physician entrepreneurs or other types of entrepreneurs that wants to be involved in working with gene therapy and drug delivery systems, I would love to talk with you about uh, maybe helping us out develop some of our drugs. And I think that's the last slide I'm going to show you.